No sweat. Well, if there are any jitters, they should be over after the first frame, huh? Well, <laughs> you hope. <laughs> it, it depends. I mean, major championships, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Chris coming in light, just leaving the nine pin. And, you know, early on, I know it's only two frames, but to me, he looks a little bit out of his comfort zone. Looks like he's hooking it a little bit more than I think he would like to. Changes to a, a ball that goes much straighter. And, you know, a great tip we always talk about, throwing the ball straight at single pin spares. Gives you that wry smile, doesn't it? Yeah. I think it's just a relief that uh, he's still clean through two frames. Both players uh, staying clean. Chris Hayden down by only one pin. Hasn't hit flush, hasn't hit the pocket yet. And this, sh this lane, last shot, missed the head pin. PBA regional titles, four years as a pro for Chris Hayden, but still looking for his first national title. Chris goes high, leaving only the four pin, a great break. And we see this time and time again. The shot prior on that lane, he misses the head pin. Compensation, he goes high. Fortunate just leaving the four pin. Still clean. Dave Arnold's bar reaction early on looks terrific. At this stage, I would have to give the edge to him, judging by the fact that Chris Hayden hasn't hit the pocket yet. Won the very first PBA event he bowled in. Dave Arnold goes high, leaving the three pin. And just a beautiful form and style, beautiful swing, great balance. This ball looked like it was left to target. And I'm telling you right now, you only have to miss by a hair to not hit the pocket out there. Execution is a must. Which it should be in a major championship. You know, you were telling me yesterday that he likes to roll it straight, but he can hook it. But we're seeing a lot of action on the ball early on. Has he changed his style at all? And if so, why? Well, um, I think that uh, he he's hooking it a little bit more than uh, than he normally does. However, you know, he's he's a very versatile. He can hook he can hook the entire lane if he wants to. But his A game, his strength is going straight. Max score of 269 up by a pin. Same identical hit, time before last on that lane, leaving the ring in 10. Carbon copy, six pin goes around, and just not a good break. Like one of your putts, he was robbed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like hitting the collar and popping back out. Cross lane, straight and hard. Well done. You get the feeling if one of them, either Dave or Chris, can get on a roll and maybe post three strikes in a row, you might uh, have an advantage. Yeah, I agree. You know, not to mention the fact of how much pressure that would be that would put on your opponent. One guy's having a hard time hitting the pocket. The next guy, the, the other guy, gets up and throws a three bagger, and all of a sudden it, you feel like you're wearing a tourniquet around your neck. Chris Hayden, right lane, down by ten. Well, the PBA Tour heads east to the Bowlers Club in Latham, New York for the Parker Bone Empire State Open. Can Pete Weber repeat as champion? Find out next week, next Sunday, 12.30 Eastern Time Live as we bring you all the exciting action of the championship final rounds, the Parker Bone Empire State Open.
Now Chris Hayden, left lane, strike working, another strike, 20 pin lead. Well, he had trouble hitting the puck at the first couple of frames. What he's done now, he's using two different balls, one on the right lane, one on the left lane, and just a fantastic adjustment. That takes a little maple moxie. And finally, the smile after two in a row. Got a break, got the high. Yep, went high, got a break, only leaving the 6'10", and last two shots, both going high. And right now, I think for Dave Arnold, it's a speed adjustment on the right lane. Looks great off his hand, nice and clean, and just duck hooks in the back end. And one of the ways you can control the back end hook is by ball speed. Whoa. All right. Almost. Take it easy. <laughs> you know, talking about Parker Bone, he missed by 105 pins. He qualified ninth. That's pretty good after 56 games. And Pete Weber just missed by 74 pins. Yeah, well, you know, Parker won the first tournament of the year. Pete Weber getting back into things uh, after a little vacation. And uh, next week, Parker's looking to, uh, to do some good things at the uh, tournament that's named after him. Now, Dave Arnold, down by 22. Looking to get rid of the 10-pin on the left lane. Struck in the first and strikes there in the fifth. Chris Hayden in the lead, but it's early. The winner gets Jeff Lizzie from Sandusky, Ohio. One whole section filled with Lizzie and the relatives and family and friends. Chris Hayden. Light again, leaving the 3-9. Could have been ugly, leaving the 7-pin with that. Difficult spare, you've got to cover the back pin, the 9-pin, see the ball just not getting enough of the head pin. Should move left off a strike ball using the same target, ball hooking into the spare. This is one where you don't want to try to hook it. I'm sorry, try to throw it straight. Of course you want to hook it. Make up your mind. I'm sorry. It got so quiet you could hear your credit card drop. Thank you. <laughs> Take a look at this form. Very deliberate. Notice how straight up and down his body is. Tall guy, long arms. Notice how he gradually goes from straight up and down to nice and, nice and low and great knee bend. Look at that leverage. Great balance. Good idea to start tall, finish low. Two strikes in the fourth and the fifth. The good news for Chris, nothing open. Well, they're filling frames, you know, no open frames. A key when the lanes are tough. This ball goes high, leaving the 6-10. And he's hoping that he's going to get a little break and trip the 6-10 out. And he's like, oh, all right. Cover the spare. <laughs> Nicely done. Pretty consistent. Okay, he can inhale now. <laughs> okay, deep breath. All right, David needs to get on a roll. Well, he needs to put a couple together. Last two shots on this right lane have been high. Interesting to see what kind of an adjustment he makes. A strike here will give him a two-pin lead. You can see that he's picked up the ball speed and controlled the back end. Beautiful shot. Let's take a look at Dave's form here. Beautiful four-step approach. Shoulders are back. Nice level back push away. Head high back swing. Look at that position there. Again, the great knee bend. And look at that follow through right at, right at the, the target. And watch the action of the head pin going to the sidewall and doing its stuff. 
Going back to what you were saying at the top of the telecast about the lane conditions, you actually thought lane conditions might favor a bowler like Dave Arnold because? Well, I think that when they get really tough, you've got to go straight. Straighter is greater when they're brutal, and he likes to go straight. Keeping it in play, just like that shot right there for a three-bagger. All of a sudden, we have Chris Hayden down by 12. Getting down to crunch time, 8th, ninth, and 10th frames. Time to start striking. See, now that's the one I was talking about, the frame before. Captain Stryker, Captain Over here. <laughs> what a great break. Watch this shot here. He went high the last time in this lane. Gives this one a pinch more room to the left. And watch the action. The head pin going to the sidewall, tripping the 6 10 out. Look at those eyes. Come on, baby. Yes! Can you spell intensity? It's on right now. The game is on. Well, if you take a look at his reaction when he let go of it, I think he was real fortunate that he only left the four pin. That ball was right out of his hand immediately. It was going high the whole way. Watch this. Looks like he just bailed right out of that shot. You know, one of the hot topics in the bowling world these days, the new American Bowling Congress Sport League program. Sport bowling being offered to those bowlers who wish to compete in the most challenging of lane conditions. The PBA, an active participant with the ABC in promoting the program, so look for Sport League Bowling starting at your center this fall. Now, ninth frame, foundation frame, Dave Arnold can really put the hammer to Chris Hayden. Bingo, looking for his third PBA national title. Both of his previous wins against Walter Ray Williams Jr. I told you, this guy's tough. It, it doesn't matter. Now watch the action. This ball going into the switch zone. Head pin going to the wall. Five pin actually goes into the seven. And he likes it. Now, any mark, 10th frame. He's a winner. But remember, easier said than done on this condition. How about that? That's known in the biz as dead flush. And that look on the face of Chris, he yeah. knows. Yeah, Chris right now is kind of feeling like the first person to be kicked off the island, Survivor. But, you know, the one thing he can take away from this is he knows that he now belongs. He made the championship round in a major format, major tournament, on brutal conditions. Nine. The spare here, that'll give Dave Arnold uh, 235. Pretty strong. And, you know, I... When I said he needed to pick up his ball speed, I think he was he was tuning in because it looks like he he amped it up a bit, went a little bit straighter, and that helped him throw that five bagger towards the end of the game. Two thirty-five, the magic number. Good start. Real good start for Dave. Chris finishing out. Great week for him. He can learn from the experience here. And a lot of times, Jim, it's it's real difficult. Championship round. You don't have a bar reaction. It's only a one-game match. If you don't make the right moves, the, the right guesses, the right changes, hard to hit the pocket. Well, you can feel the tension in the air early this morning. But if you really want to feel some tension, how about yesterday for hours and hours on end and what they go through? Yeah, you know, that's the one thing the folks don't, at home don't see is the match play, the qualifying. You know, you got to make it through qualifying. If you don't make match play, you don't have a chance to win. Then once you get the match play, 
another 24 games of, of, uh, of bowling. 30 bonus pins for winning matches. A good showing anyway. 214 for Chris Hayden. And a good week for Chris Hayden out of Tampa, Florida. That man, Dave Arnold, advances. You want to hear some noise when we come back? Most of Sandusky, Ohio's here. Why? Jeff Lizzie. Well, you know, I think the pressure is what the players make of it. You know, what's going through their mind, what they're thinking. They're thinking the right thoughts. They can use that pressure to their advantage. If they're thinking about TV, money, all this other stuff, it, it could be difficult pulling the trigger. Well, Jeff Lizzie coming in light, leading the 2 8 10. He's deeper, more further inside than, than Dave Arnold. Ball going further right. And I don't know, I think that ball was either too far to the right or he just missed it at the bottom of the swing. This split here, you got to throw it hard and straight at the 2 8 and hope that you bounce something out. Or cover the 2 8 like Jeff did and just cover the count. Sometimes, like in golf, Right? It's not the worst thing to get that bad shot out of the way early. If you're going to open, the best time to do it is the first frame. This is what makes the sport so difficult. First shot goes light. Now, the next shot, tendency is to, to go high, to miss left. You want to avoid doing the same mistake twice. Like that. Jeff looks a little bit confused, not really sure what his ball's doing, what his ball's going to do when it leaves his hand. This ball doesn't go as near, near as far to the right and just grips the lane and goes high. A good break this time, only leaving the three pin. Well, we talked about all the family and friends of Jeff that are here, and sometimes that just added pressure. Yeah, yeah I, think it's, uh, I think it's tough bowling in front of the fans, uh, bowling in the hometown. It was always difficult for myself. I'd rather bowl somewhere where they didn't know me. Dave Arnold and success factor today in match number one. Hit both lanes uh, fairly well. Three strikes on each, but the big thing, no open frames. That ball was OB, leaving the one, two, eight, ten. You can see that it was just right off the stand. The ball's not going to hook from that spot. Lucky it stayed on the lane. Now, the thing here is you got to get the ball left of the head pin, throw the head pin over into the 10 pin, and the ball will cover the two pin, throwing the two pin into the eight. That first ball was right of Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> yeah, that was right of right. All right, well, now, here's the thing. You know, we got to regroup. Open frame in the second. Just a one-pin difference. He knows he made a bad shot. You know, it's going to happen. Deep breath, back on it. He's been hitting both lanes extremely well. He knows what to do. Great shot. Doesn't overcompensate, not going high on the, on the left lane. Jeff was talking about the uh, 14 Toledo area bowlers that were trying to make it as far as he advanced. He says he feels like the Lone Ranger out here. He says the regional bowlers are not used to the pressure that the touring guys are. Yeah, that's true. That it's so much different out here. Wow. That is Jeff's wife, Kathy, who is also a bowler. And she just said, great shot, great shot, which it was. First shot on that lane, 2 8 10. Nice adjustment. Not a great break leaving the 10th pin. However, did hit the pocket. Just got to get through those first couple of frames, get rid of those jitters. I look for him to start striking. <laughs> tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern Time for primetime coverage. Catch the Highlight Show at midnight for more information on the Winter X Games on ESPN. Log on to ESPN.com. Some of the moves that they make when they're airborne on skis are just mind-boggling. 
<laughs> yeah, you won't see me trying it. You made a good point early. He does look just a bit confused. Yeah, he, he, I think it's a combination of he's, he's a little confused and he's a little tight. I think right now he knows that the left lane definitely hooks more and needs to move in. High, the last shot on that lane, this ball gets further right and also hooks high. The good news is this tells Jeff Lizzie that he can move further left and should have a little bit of room to the right. <laughs> Jeff hasn't really hit, he's only hit the pocket one time. He's only down by three pins. However, Dave Arnold working on a strike with a strike in the fourth can increase his lead to 13. Well, that ball drifts high. A lot, a lot better than the shot before on that lane. This spare is a lot easier than the wash out he shot at earlier. That ball cuts right through the face, only leaving the 6 10. That could have been grandma's teeth real easy. That would be the Greek church, Jim. Now that grandmothers across the country have been offended by the pride of Hollywood, Florida. I mentioned that Dave Arnold has been a touring pro for 14 years with two national titles, but no major. What would winning here mean? I think that anybody who wins a major championship is a cut above the rest of the players. I mean. It just means it's the toughest field to beat, and it means something extra. Randy Peterson won this championship back in 87. What did it mean to your career? It, it was, uh, it, it gave me a jump start. I, I actually won this tournament and then won, won the week, the, the following week. So it was, uh, it was a great jump start for my career. What a great shot there from Dave Arnold. Who dispensed with Chris Hayden in match number one, 235 to 214. Watch this shot right around the third arrow. Out to about the 10 board. Notice not a lot of belly. That ball faces up. Almost looks like it rolls up and stops. Ends up dead flush. 10 in the pit. Now Jeff Lizzie, fifth frame. Time to get it going. And you see that look. He knows it. Open in the first. Bingo. Take a ball. What a great shot. This fan club's here. His wife loved it. Let's take a look at this form. A very strong individual. Has to put all the weight of the ball in his hand and make his swing nice and relaxed. Now, look at the top of the back. So look at the cup in his wrist. And watch the power in the downswing. One more. That's power. And watch the action of the six pin goes to the wall and cuts the 10 out. Twentieth in the PBA World Power Rankings doubles. There he did. Did exactly what we were talking about, Jim. He moved further left, knowing, knowing that he had room to the right. Now he's got a double. And watch this reaction. Talking on a strike. Double here. Maintains a three-pin lead. What a beautiful pitch that was. You know, to golfers, rhythm is so important. And it's amazing after the break, they can come right back and not have lost any of the momentum. It really is. And I think that that is, is uh, done by what, what you're thinking mentally and staying focused mentally as you see that ball going just dead flush. You know, sitting down on the bench, you lose a little bit of rhythm. But I think you can keep that, that rhythm if you're focused mentally. Muscle memory is how important to a bowler. Extremely important. You know, Running the feeling of the ball coming off your hand perfectly through your mind helps you execute great shots. So you believe in visualization. I mean, when you amassed your 12 titles, you did that. Absolutely. I, I would visualize what the ball felt like coming off my hand, that feel. It's, it's, a, it's a feel game. These guys know what it feels like when they let go of it, and it's perfect. They can turn around and walk back. They know the ball's going, going to hit the pocket. Controlling pin carry is another story. That With that hit right there, Dave Arnold, just threw a three-bagger for a three-pin lead. Jeff with back-to-back -back strikes in five and six. What a break that was. 
That, that ball being way outside, hooking back, shredding the rack. This is why you have power in revolutions. Talking Take a about look at, hand release, huh? That's right, Jim. Watch this hand release. Look how far up underneath it he is in the rotation and those fingers driving right up the back end of it, just getting a handful. And watch the action of the head pin going to the sidewall. Well, when they've got a family, uh, holy cow. Family reunion. Kathy's here. She's a bowler. Jeff's twin brother, John, was a PBA member, used to bowl in the regionals. His older brother, Tom, PBA member who owns a couple of regional titles. Look at that look. He knows it's game on now. He can find the pocket on both lanes. There's Jeff's twin brother, John. No resemblance. <laughs> An avid bowler in his own right. Now, Dave Arnold working on a three-bagger. Strike here, three-pin game. Hang on. That shot looked pretty good. It was just a pinch left in, it, in this pattern. That's all it takes. Just a pinch left out of his hand. Hoping that it'll hold. Avoiding, avoiding a big split, which is a good break. He knows it too right away. He's, oh gosh, dog it. Got that one a little bit left. All right, let's cover the 3-6. And the one thing you don't want to do is add fuel to the fire. You get Jeff Lizzie with a four-timer. He's got his fans back here. You want to keep the heat on by throwing strikes. Dave Arnold now to disadvantage. Foundation frame, ninth frame, left lane. Dave Arnold trailing by 19. Beautiful. Right now, I'm going to go out on a limb and say the left lane is the better of the two lanes. Jeff and his whole family had breakfast at the same restaurant they've been going to all week here in Toledo. They're open for breakfast and lunch. The owner said, if you want us to open it up, we'll feed the whole clan tonight for dinner. I think that's fantastic. I think if Jeff wins, he's going to be paying. The parents, and that was Kathy Dorn Lizzie, who's a PWBA champion in her own right, and I have no idea who that is. <laughs> Watch the action of the headpin. It's going to go to the sidewall and come screaming back. Hutton, the bird dog, we call it, just ripping the tent out. And, and watch this reaction. That was a handful, Jim. I think his brother Jeff and wife Kathy are more nervous than he is. Absolutely. Watch the action of the head pin. This time gets gets uh, interrupted, doesn't get all the way over to get the 10 pin. By not striking there, leaves the door open for Dave Arnold. Important now, the still shot, we need count, or Jeff needs count. A strike here will force Dave Arnold to throw two strikes in the 10th frame and nine on his field ball to win by one. Count very important. And what a great match. And did you expect anything different? National championship. Great shot. What a finish after being open in the first. We talked about it. Really, I mean, the first three frames, he looked a little bit confused. And Jeff told me he's, he's done that all week. He'd go to, he'd pull a good game on one pair, go to the next pair, and be lost for four or five frames. All of a sudden, throw a four or five bagger, bail it out. He did exactly that that game there. Now, Dave Arnold, a double and nine. He advances to meet Tommy Dulutz. Anything less, Jeff Lizzie wins. Oh. Need some minute. help. Wow. Brother. The uh, obscure sport. Uh, a lot of people play it in their backyards, but they, they don't realize there's an actual organization. Um, 
And fortunately for me, my dad was involved in the national organization and was starting a club in Eureka where I lived at the time. And I just naturally uh, adapted to it and I, I just played it all the time and that just, uh, it suited me perfect. I enjoyed it. Uh, I, I had a lot of fun growing up with my family. Uh, we didn't have an excessive amount of money, but uh, you know that's, that's, I think, secondary. It's, it's nice to have that if you have it, but uh, it's not necessary to be happy. I, I uh, had a very, very nice childhood, uh, basically supplied what we needed. And uh, fortunately, I think that's one of the reasons my, or whatever, the, one of the reasons we got into horseshoes is because it was a fairly inexpensive sport the whole family could play. 17 times a California State Horseshoe pitching champion. Are they similar? Playing horseshoes first and then get introduced to bowling later on. I think I picked up bowling fairly quickly without as much practice as had I never played horseshoes before. I think it would have taken me a lot longer to get good. Final score in match number two, Jeff Lizzie 224, Dave Arnold 203. So Jeff Lizzie in his hometown practically of Sandusky, but he considers it his home tournament. Second last week in Las Vegas. Up next, the second qualifier, Tommy Delutes, live from Toledo, Southwick Lanes. PBA National Championship live from Southwick Lanes in Toledo, Ohio. We just saw a terrific match. Jeff Lizzie, 224 to 203 against Dave Arnold. Before that, Arnold ousted Chris Hayden. So it's Tommy Delutes qualified second against this man. Success factor for Jeff after the first was open and two and three, as you were saying, a little confusing. <laughs> Disappointing loss last week. He was second runner up in Las Vegas, the only true power player in our final field of five. Yeah, a really good look at Tommy DeLutz Jr. Said he's been having trouble with the new oil the PBA has been using this year. This week, a little more early friction, and he likes to throw it. And it's just a terrific opening shot by Tommy. Take a look at this here. Look at that hand rotation and that follow through going right at the target. And watch the action, the ball going right through the one three. And look at those eyes. You think this guy wants to win a major? Fired up. Damn. Twelfth year as a pro. This would be his biggest victory. Stupid fucking idiot. Planer playing a similar line in, to Jeff Lizzie. Side toward my butt. Should be deeper on this left lane. 38th in this event a year ago, but the second qualifier, his first PBA National Championship telecast. Nerves, no sign. Well, oh, he sure didn't show those two shots. Just two terrific shots to start the match. Jeff's just got a great mental attitude, a great outlook on what he's doing, and a great reaction from that shot. Other finishers, you see Parker Bone there, will be in his hometown, Latham, New York. Parker Bone Empire State next week right here on ESPN. Patrick Healy, Jr., out of Mexico City. Tournament leader going in the last night. fun as we could do a split screen. We could get Jeff staring on one side and Tommy staring yeah. on the other and had a stare down because I mean intensity is at, uh, at a peak here. These guys are two really really intense individuals. What a great shot from Jeff Lizzie makes the match all even. Unless both of them strike out and Jeff would lose by 10 because it'd be 300 to 290. Oh. 
A great shot and didn't get that hit. Tommy using two different balls. More hook, uh, using a ball that hooks more on the right lane because that is the tire of the lane. Watch the action. And that could have struck nine out of ten times. Based on what you've seen so far, favored lane, left or right? I think the left lane. Because? Hooks more, there's more friction. The guys can throw it further to the right without fear of it not hooking back. I think the right lane's a little tight, a little tight, a little touchy down the lane. Two-time All-America selection out of William Patterson College back in New Jersey. Won his first career title back in 99, Lakewood, California. But this is a major, and the pressure is so much greater. I agree. And I, you know, Tommy's come a long way in his 12 years out here. He's made a lot of telecasts over the last four or five years. With the one win under his belt. Lots more confidence. Great shot. Using a weaker ball with a weaker pin. And what the weaker pin does is it doesn't make the ball hook quite as much. And it's a perfect combination for him on the left lane, which does hook more. I'm watching Jeff. He was a bit bemused by the pin action there. Just said to Tommy, nice shot. Jeff Lizzie working on a double. Can take the lead. We're getting some great reactions from both, aren't we? Oh, these guys are they're two great guys. You'll never meet two nicer people in your life. But watch this. This ball looks like it's in the nose zone, and it ends up tickling the head pin, and look at that action. And a little blessing on a Sunday. That a boy. <laughs> now, the good lane. After a break like that, this ball should be dead flush. See ya. That's what we're talking about. And that's what Jeff Lizzie's talking about. Kathy's a little more exuberant. That's brother John there. Tommy DeLutz, pretty tough competitor, unfazed. He chose to finish on the left lane. See how he handles this right lane. Now, you say unfazed, but you have to be aware of the crowd and the crowd reaction. Sure, you are. I mean, but that's, again, getting back to the mental aspect of it. This is the, this is the problem that the right lane is uh, giving everybody. A little hang down the lane, that ball just not catching enough of the head pin, leaving the 2-8, and not an easy spare. Cover both pins with the ball. He should move right of target, right, right of his strike target, allowing the ball to hook into the 2-8. Needs a hook. Wow. Ooh. Wow. Other finishers. We talked about 56 games to get in. We started with 130. There is last year's champion. Went on, as we mentioned, to use this event as a springboard for Player of the Year honors, Norm Duke. Brian LeClaire, we're going to be in his, uh, very close to his hometown next week. We call him E. Claire out here on tour. <laughs> Affectionately. <laughs> Steve Hoskins out of Florida. Tarpon Springs. I would imagine the TV sets are jamming in Flushing, New York, especially back there at the Whitestone Lane where Tommy works part-time in the pro shop when he's home. Great pitch. A terrific match. We've got Jeff Lizzie and Tommy DeLute, and the winner advances against the number one qualifier, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. On a four-bagger, that would be four strikes in a row for those of you keeping score at home. Needs a hook. Okay, last one came back. Well, that's the trouble we see on the right lane. That ball got down to the break point, which is the break point's where the ball starts to face up to the pocket, and watch how it just keeps going. Never grabs the lane. Leaving a one, two, four, six, ten.
Jeff and Kathy, almost newlyweds, and well, how was the honeymoon and things? Yeah, December 2nd, I uh, got to marry my soulmate. Uh, she, she's the best thing that ever happened to me, and uh, I think it's boosted my career up. It was a great wedding. Uh, it was in New Jersey. Had my whole family, her whole family, a lot of bowlers, a lot of friends, and it was, it couldn't be any better. Said hit it right there. I mentioned that she is a PWBA champion in her own right, Kathy Dorn Lizzie. Just have to find a way to get Kathy out of her shyness. <laughs> yeah. Watch the action of the head pin go to the sidewall. And it's just looking for the 10. <laughs> what a great break. Now Tommy Deluce working on a strike. Right lane. And again, we see the trouble on the right lane. The, there's hang down the lane on the right lane. Get the ball a little bit too far to the right, Jim. It just doesn't make it back to the pocket. Deep inside line of Tommy Deluce Jr. All the way out to about the seventh board and just doesn't have enough friction to get back to the head pin. Friction is what makes the ball hook. Friction and then rotation. Tommy's last telecast, also a PBA major, the 2000 Tournament of Champions, but oxygen gets a little heavy in a major, doesn't it? It sure does. The spare there, he's only down by 12. Jeff working on a strike. Now Tommy in the left lane, the good lane. You, know, you can breathe a little easier on the left lane. You know that you, you, can, you can miss a little bit right and the ball's going to get back. You've been talking a lot about the uh, deep inside line. Well, the deep inside line, what it does for these two players is it gives them angle through the front, and that angle through the front creates, creates hold left. Here's what we're talking about. Now watch it. It's live. In between fourth and fifth arrow, dead flush. Here, Kathy rooting on Jeff. She's saying one, one double here. You're in the title match. Jeff knows it. This this is a big shot. Getting past the right lane. Yeah. Yeah. What a shot that was! Right you, into your living room. You really got to thread the needle on this lane here. He just, Jeff Lizzie does just that. Six goes to the wall. Does its does its job. And look at those eyes. He's going, come on, carry the 10. Yeah, baby. Only 10 days left to make your selection for one of seven pros to compete in the battle at Little Creek. Simply log on to the news section of the PBA Tours website at pba.com to cast your vote. And while you're there, you can browse for the site for all the latest information. A strike, and he's in. There you go. That's the good lane. You got to do it on the good lane. You got to get, got to get away, get a pick, get back on the right. Avoid any disasters on the right lane, strike on the left, get lucky, carry a strike on the right, put a string together. Okay, and somebody's got a little cell phone action going. That's your wife calling from Florida, wants to know what flight you're on. Honey, I'll be home at about 9 o'clock. Keep the kids up late. Meatloaf's in the oven for you <laughs> when you get home. Meatloaf's in the oven. Now. Foundation frame, ninth frame. Tommy Deleuze. All right. And that's what we've seen many times on the right lane. Well, we told you about the website and the battle at Little Creek. Look who's got 3.7% of the votes. There's still lots of time. You've got a lot of dangling chads there. <laughs> not, not exactly the fan favorite. I'll get the state of Florida. I, the state of Florida would have voted for me, but... They had a little trouble. Anyway. All of all of Indiana has voted for Mike there. Well, of course. And they should. He deserves to be there. Plus, he just won a couple of weeks ago. That battle at Little Creek, by the way, will be at the Naval Base in Virginia Beach, Virginia. That's going to be a great venue, including the uh, winter telecast here on ESPN. Tommy Deluce, 239 possible. Jeff Lizzie, 
251. NHL tonight, Barry Melrose, Darren Pang, the whole gang, 11.30 Eastern time, a special edition of the NHL tonight from the All-Star Game in Colorado. Watch the hockey show for hockey fans to get highlights and analysis from around the league. And for more information, log on to ESPN.com. Jeff Lizzie looking on as Tommy DeLutz gets ready to throw the biggest shot of the week. The reason why I say that's the biggest shot is because now that forces Jeff Lizzie to get the first hit in the tent on the tough right lane. First time that uh, Tommy smiled in about four frames. Well, you know, now, Tommy, it doesn't even matter what he does on his fill shot. Something in the high 230s, Jeff Lizzie will need the first hit. Actually, I shouldn't say that because if Tommy strikes here, Jeff Lizzie would need the first hit and nine to win, nine spare to win. Counts crucial. That's the way it sets up. That's count. Good call. What an uphill battle it's been for Tommy, too. I mean, literally fighting the crowd. So a strike and nine for this man. Not only, not only battling Jeff Lizzie, battling the crowd, the elements, the lane conditions. Jeff Lizzie, same situation he was in last week. Must come through in the 10th frame. Forward, that ball is light. Gets a handful. This ball's wide. Grabs the lane at the last second. Comes back. Tickles a headpin. We've got a spill on 48. What a great break. Look at that. Look at those eyes. Come on, ball hook. Come on. Come on. Oh. <laughs> All right, now we still need nine. tie we have a tie game if he spares this if he spares us we have a tie and a one frame roll off befitting the year's first major I'll tell you this is uh this is about the, as good at action as you can get major championship needs to hook hurry so we've got a one frame roll off and Tommy DeLutz gets to pick which lane he wants. One ball roll off the higher seed selects the lane and the order so that's Tommy. We we'll keep doing it until the tie is broken right now. Advantage goes to Tommy DeLutz. He's got the left lane. Tell you what, pretty gritty. This kid is tough. He knows how to play. Great Maple Moxie out there. Now, what Jeff Lizzie? He's going on the left lane as well. This is just terrific. Now they're going to the right lane. It's who can perform on the right lane. It's going to get this done. The ugly right lane. Doesn't get any better than this. It's kind of like watching Justin Leonard or Davis Love go eyeball to eyeball with Tiger, isn't it? I'm telling you. How about that one? Tommy does what he has to do. He gets up and he strikes on the right lane. Come on, babe. All the pressure now on Jeff Lizzie. Heavenly Father, she can't watch. Jeez. Great shot. Hey. Yeah. I'll tell you what. When's the last time you saw a match like this? Oh, it's been a long time. This is one of the best matches I've seen, especially in a major championship. 
Walter Ray Williams awaits the winner. He's like, I don't want any part of this. It's like being thrown in the lion cage. And that would be the only thing that would stop one of these players on that lane. Tommy doesn't even shoot the spare. It's whatever you get on the first ball, a strike here. Jeff advances to the championship match against Walter Ray Williams Jr. Tommy knows he threw a great shot. It's all up to Jeff. These guys know how to ball under pressure. What a great match and a great performance by Tommy DeLuz Jr. and Jeff Lizzie. They are on their feet at a sold-out Southwick Lanes. We're live in Toledo, Ohio. Standing ovation, Tommy DeLuz and Jeff Lizzie. What a match it was. What volume? Success factor for today, Jeff Lizzie. Just about even. Nine strikes on 47, eight on 48, and your old friend Mo met him on Jeff Lizzie's side. You got it. Jeff Lizzie started off where he, where he left off the last match. Strike on the left lane. Our tournament leader, Walter Ray Williams Jr., 32 times. How do you get up there after watching the match that we just saw and you're running into a freight train? Well, I, especially with the kind of ball reaction that Walter has, I, I don't think he has a very good reaction. It looked like he struggled in practice, looked like he struggled an hour before the telecast, this ball going in light. And then you see a guy like Jeff Lizzie striking it well. But it's still Walter A. Williams Jr., and when, when you bowl against him, anything can happen. I'm trying. <laughs> record of 11 and 19 as the number one seed. You know, Jim, a lot of times what happens is you have a great shot during the week, you get on the telecast and yeah. a little bit different, and, and it's just not conducive. Yeah. And his wife, Paige, kind of outnumbered, the Paige Pennington. Sweet, sweet lady. I love Paige. What a nice gal. Took me to dinner, her and Walter, back in Indianapolis in the fall. And of course, he paid, and I enjoyed every minute of it. Now, Jeff Lizzie working on a strike. Yeah. Needs to hook. The voice of Randy Peterson, known as Alligator Arms, back in Hollywood, Florida. <laughs> Alligator Arms, I like that. When the check comes, yeah. those arms get short, don't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. Jeff getting, Jeff getting a great break. Jeff getting a great break on the uh, right lane. Only leaving the two pin going in light. You know, and if you miss, you don't hit the pocket on that, that lane. If you can get a spare, great. Second half of ABC's All-Star Sunday coming up. The NFL's top players in Honolulu for the Pro Bowl. Players competing this year include Culpepper, Rich Gannon, Super Bowl MVP Ray Lewis. Was that defense any good? Action kicks off 5.30 tonight on ABC Sports. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Okay, that ball going high on the left lane. I think now it's time to make an adjustment. He's thrown almost every ball dead flush on that lane. That ball goes in high. Time to, time to make a move. Lane's breaking down and changing. In between fourth and fifth arrow, this ball catches too much of the head pin, leaving the four pin. Easy spare. National championship on the line. His only victory back in 92 at the Brunswick Memorial World Open, Lake Zurich. Walter likes blowing in that thumb hole to give him a better feel. And a pretty emotional man right there. You could hear that reaction. What a great shot. Walter goes in a little bit light, gets into the swish zone. 
Head pin goes to the sidewall, slaps, slaps the 5-7 silly, and watch this reaction. Yeah, baby. Game on. You know, that stat was a little misleading. Yeah. 19 is the top seed, because what that means is there have been 30 championships where he's been the best through the grueling qualifying. Absolutely. And like I said before, if the lanes are a little bit different, not conducive, and Walter can't figure him out in time, he ends up, he ends up losing. Shows you how much I know. I thought he had struggled. I thought he'd struggle early. He's got a three-bagger. There you go. Switch zone on that right lane is a popular play for everybody. Hard to get the ball to go flush on that lane. Flush meaning the ball deeper into the one-three pocket. The lighter, the mixing hit is carrying well. Watch this ball way outside. Hooks back. Looked, looked real close to a Walter Ray shot on that lane. Five pin kind of falling down. Nonchalantly. Yeah, Jeff Lizzie working on strike. Good lane, left lane. Well, if there was any gas seeping out of his tank after that emotional overtime win against Tommy Dilutes, he just filled the tank back up with a double. This guy, he's, he's, uh, there's no letdown in this guy. Mentally, just a tough competitor. He made the adjustment on the left lane. That ball, dead flush. Now, Walter Ray working on a three bagger. shot you know it's amazing Walter Ray looked like he was struggling in practice looked like he had a, a poor ball reaction had trouble hitting the pocket and goes spare four bagger for major championship he is just amazing Terrific action befitting the first major of the PBA season. We're at Southwick Lanes, Toledo, Ohio. Jeff Lizzie matched up in a dandy against Walter Ray Williams. Darrell, Jeff Lizzie's ball going much further to the right than Walter Ray's. Notice that his ball's out around the 10th board. Walter Ray's about the 13th, 14th board. It just didn't bite. Especially for a man who's 20th in the PBA World Power Rankings. Bad break. Terrible break. Really bad time for that to happen. Now we have to regroup. And, and refocus. Absolutely. Back to the left lane is good lane. Take a deep breath and just get back on it. Walter Ray still has to bowl in that right lane. Did you see how fast the messenger came over looking for the 10? Watch this. Wow. The bad news? Bad news rocked it, but it didn't knock it over. Lady Luck has deserted the Sandusky native. Absolutely. Right now, it's just a question of or a matter of Jeff not getting the brakes. And Walter Ray just being Walter Ray. Just an amazing individual. If he wins today, he will need only one more title to tie Mark Roth, who's second on the all-time title holders list. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's incredible. Walter Ray on the right lane, leaving the flat 10. But the good news is he left himself a makeable spare, avoiding any kind of trouble. And this guy doesn't miss spares. At least one title a year for the past eight. You know, he's been so good for so long. I think uh, a lot of times uh, folks out here take uh, his skill and his talent for granted. Right now, he's putting on a clinic, showing you the kind of touch that enables you to win 32 times. Yeah! Just another great shot by Walter. Ho hum. Jeff knows what he needs to do. It's, it's now or never. First major. 
The only thing on his mind is striking. Hey! Boink, you got some help. <laughs> yeah, it's just amazing that in the four matches that we've seen, it's been so difficult for the guys to get the ball to go dead flush on that right lane. The Wally shot, the light shot, is the shot to play on that lane. Lane 47 doesn't seem to be a problem. Jeff Lizzie, ninth frame, must strike. Ball deep inside doesn't look like it pushes as far to the right. Going to catch too much of the headband and trip for Bowler's best friend. You know, we talk about this man being very, very intelligent, and you said at the very top of the telecast, Randy, that these are thinking man's conditions. Absolutely. You have to have imagination to bowl on this stuff, not to mention all the tricks. You have to be versatile. Walter Ray Williams Jr., very smart guy, knows his game and knows what to do with his game to get the ball to the 1-3. Yeah. Thank you very much. How about 33 PBA titles? This one a major to start off 2001. We'll come back, crown our champion, and talk with him live from Toledo.